Hi there, Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360, and in this video we're going to take our preliminary engineering in InfraWorks 360 and move it into Civil 3D for detailed design and documentation. So fortunately for us, in Civil 3D 2016, opening InfraWorks data in the Civil 3D environment is actually quite easy. There's a command designed for it. If I go to the Insert ribbon, I'll see an InfraWorks 360 button and that actually folds out into two commands. One will actually open a model and the second one allows you to configure the settings that are involved when the data from InfraWorks 360 is brought into Civil 3D. So let's look at that configuration part first. I'll open that command and the first thing I'll tell you is that you can take all the settings that you modify in this dialog and save them and I've done that so I'm actually going to open the file that I created and I've called that file roads and drainage now right off the bat you'll notice some changes here with these checkboxes when I open this file notice that I'm only bringing in design roads and drainage networks with this whole list of things that I can possibly bring in now on the right side is where I can configure specific things that happen as those objects are being brought in so let's take a look at alignments first and we'll notice that I'm bringing my alignments in with the style proposed and with this label set you can also tell it which layer to put your alignments on and then we've also got another section for alignments and profiles so not only can I control the style of the alignments I can also control the styles and layers of the profiles both design and existing so now we'll move down to pipe networks so if I go to that dialog you'll see that I can choose which pipe catalog I'm going to use as well as some default pipes and structures so that sets up all of our configurations for the objects that we're bringing in so now we're ready to bring in the data so I'll launch the open InfraWorks 360 model command and that's going to bring up this dialog first thing I need to do is select the SQLite file that represents my model and this is called Apple Springs 2 in this case so I'll click that and pick open. Civil 3D is going to think about that file for a while. Notice that it picked up the coordinate system that it's in. Next I get to choose the selection area and most often you're going to want to use this area of interest choice. You don't want to bring in the whole InfraWorks 360 model. Now this is a pretty neat part of the uh, of the tool because when I click select area it's going to turn on the aerial imagery from Bing and it's also going to show me the extents of my InfraWorks 360 model. You can see the white uh, square here. And all I need to do is zoom in and draw a box around the area that I want to consider. And I'm just going to draw a box around the Civil 3D data that we have. It'll think for a few more seconds. And now I don't have to bring in everything in the InfraWorks 360 model. And other parts of using this tool will go a little bit more quickly because it's kind of paired everything down to a subset of what's actually there. Remember that settings file that I showed you just a few minutes ago. It was called roadsanddrainage.xml. I need to remember to select that so that all of those settings are applied. And then on top of that I can go if I wish into refine selection set and notice as I told it in the settings file it's only picked design roads and drainage networks I may want to go in and make specific selections about which design roads and which pipes I want to bring in. But for this example, this is all good. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Open Model. And it's going to bring in 136 entities. So some roads uh, in the form of alignments and profiles, as well as some pipe networks with structures, manholes, pipes, end walls, and the like. It doesn't take too long, just a few seconds, and all that data will come into Civil 3D. As a last step, I'll go to the Geolocation tab, turn off the mapping information, zoom in, and see what I've got. Do a quick regen to uh, get my curves to, uh, to look the way they should. And there you can see the inlets, manholes, as well as the alignments that came in from InfraWorks 360. Now, not only did we bring in alignments for these roads, we also brought in profiles. 
So here's where I can start working on my detailed design. The profiles are already there, so I can go straight to Profile View and say Create Profile View. I want to choose alignment number three and choose my style, whatever I like to use for my company standards, and I can create my profile view. So there is the profile view of my design road, and this is a design profile. It's got vertical curves. In fact, I can even label it. I can click it, go to Edit Profile Labels, I'll import a label set. We'll use complete label set. And just like that, just like you would for any design project, you've got a profile with labels. Now the one thing that's missing is an existing ground profile. No problem. I'll go to my profile option and say create profile, create surface profile. Choose alignment three. I'll use EG from survey. That's my most accurate profile or my most accurate surface in my drawing and just click OK and it'll add it right to the profile view for me. So now this is starting to look like a road project, right, with the uh, profile existing, proposed, and all the labels. And we can keep going. Remember that we have an assembly here, so I can go ahead and create a corridor for that road. I'll launch the corridor command and um, choose my alignment, my profile, and my assembly. Choose my target surface and I'm on my way. And just like that, I've got my corridor. I can even do an intersection. I'll pull this back a bit. Launch the intersection command. Run through the paces of that. And I believe all of my defaults will be good, except that I want to add to my existing corridor, and I want to choose my daylight surface of EG from survey create my intersection. Now I can pull these two together. The same types of things that you would do for a detailed design in Civil 3D. The only difference now is that inst instead of starting with nothing, I started with some pretty well thought out design from InfraWorks 360. And of course I could continue to work and do the other roads, the other intersections, until my corridor designs are all complete. So there you have it. I've taken my preliminary engineering from InfraWorks 360 into Civil 3D, and I'm ready to really dig into detailed design and documentation, which I'm guessing you already know how to do with Civil 3D. In our next video, we'll take our finished Civil 3D design and place it back in the InfraWorks 360 model for context so that we can show our stakeholders what the finished project will look like. See you in the next video.